um, how do we implement it, right? Like this is this is something we um, in the beginning I I had to scratch my head to be like, okay, how much work do I need to plan for this? How much time is it going to take? Um, this is one version of approach. Ivan will touch on on the, a different way to use it. Uh, but for, for us, what we had to do, we had to stand up the experience platform. So in this case, we had to figure out what are the data sources coming in? What is the schema again look like? What is the identity? What are the namespaces? What is the consent? All the jazz, right? And then from there, we stood up the, the specific uh, data sets, the feeds. And then we had now within AEP, now we have our profiles. We have the attributes associated with them. We see our unify profile and, and start building segments on top of it. So now that piece is done. The second piece, now you want to get Journey Optimizer ready to go. Um, for Given that we wanted to use Journey Optimizer for email, um, we had to configure your, your common things, uh, making sure that the what are the subdomains, what are the IP addresses, if there is any uh, delegation or DNS records that need to be updated, um, all of that had to be uh, set up uh, within the JO, uh, even uh, going the extra step of uh, the unsubscription. How is that going to happen? Is there going to be uh, one unsubscription uh, link or there's going to be a page that gives them certain details? Um, and then having the IP warm up, especially if we're working with a new IP uh, for, uh, for Journey Optimizer and going through the full testing and validation. So. That's from email. The second piece was for SMS. SMS itself, today, uh, there is a native integration with Cinch, I believe. Uh, and there is plans on uh, to expand that to other vendors as Twilio and others. But in cases where these integrations don't exist, uh, you want to consider building these. And given that JO is very uh, API friendly, and a lot of these other vendors, especially SMS is in many cases, I see them uh, very uh, API friendly as well because they're, they're waiting for a trigger with a payload to send, for example, a message. Uh, you wanna make sure these configurations are in place. And finally, if you, in, in our case, we wanted to use uh, Journey Optimizer to trigger push notification. I really didn't wanna have another system doing push notification. I wanna centralize this. Um, so in that, we, we just had to go through the, the regular steps of getting the certification for iOS, for Google, uh, making sure that we had the configuration, the SDK itself, um, which is, in our case, we use the mobile uh, app SDK, and, and that was part of what used to be called launch. Now, I, I don't know what it's called now, tags um, or activation. What is it called now, Ivan? Data collection. Data collection. But I still call it launch. <laughs> launch. Yes. Yeah. So within there, there is a journey optimizer um, extension that we need to set up and, and just follow the steps. Um, and I, I want to say like Adobe actually then has, has done a great job in documenting these pieces step by step. So I, I put a link here that you guys, uh, after uh, you, you definitely can check out and see um, if you wanna see this implementation on your own. But Ivan, this is one way of doing things. Um, you, the, obviously, JO is also, you, you, the way it was created is in a way for it to be deployed quicker than standing up AP fully and such. So you wanna talk a little bit on, on how you see that happening as well? Yeah, so we have a we have a couple different features coming out soon that will let you use different APIs and and kind of copy objects back and forth. And we found that if you have some standard data models, we're going to have some out of the box schemas available for you, so that if you're looking to import data into the CDP, that it can kind of conform to sort of industry standard schemas. But the, it, you don't necessarily have to follow kind of a prescribed. Um, you know, set of guidelines. You can bring any kind of data attribute that you want and then use those as um, profile specific attributes to kind of create a tailored experience or, or message users based upon anything that, that you'd like. Um, the, you know, the, the beauty of the, the AJO setup here is 
to get up and running both with batch use cases as well as real time use cases. So you can set up events uh, from any kind of external system, whether it's a, a point of purchase system or uh, another kind of business process API, and you wanna use that to trigger uh, a particular experience. That's gonna be really easy to set up. You're just gonna basically paste the payload in and say, these are the different keys or values that I want to trigger a journey on. And then you can take them across any number of paths using conditional uh, values and things like that. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that's actually super helpful um, because not every client is going to be um, you is is going to be using it in the same fashion, right? So I've seen some clients who are interested in uh, the orchestration layer of the JO. Um, and the ability for them to um, trigger it by, by an offline, um, uh, I would say, um, trigger. Doesn't have to be necessarily someone qualified for a segment, but hey, I know someone who um, have done this action and I want to get them on this journey. Um, and then you're able to send all that information within that trigger with the payload, with the details in it, and then that will be carried over throughout the journey. So. Um, so yeah, it, it, I find that very helpful.